So it's probably going to be worth at least a mark on the foundation paper. So hopefully we're all aware that that one's a triangle. Three sides for a triangle. And then you've got four sides. So triangle. Four sides is a quadrilateral. Five sides is a pentagon. And people get confused between pentagon and polygon. So polygon is the name of all of them. Is this paper anywhere where we can do it? So this is the Corbett Maths um, set B. So it's Corbett Maths. It's on his website. If you go Google Corbett Maths um, paper two set B, this is what I'm doing. I've literally just printed it off. Printed it off. Corbett Maths paper two set B. No, this is the start of the foundation paper. So please be aware that the foundation paper does start at a grade one. Um, grade two grade three grade four grade five so yeah this is foundation so um but also yeah absolutely there's so much crossover um so yeah triangle and then we've got pentagon so people get confused polygon is what they're all called so if they asked you about a polygon a polygon is an any-sided shape is what they're all called and then we've got pentagon which is five octagon which is eight and heptagon which is seven hexagon is six and so on okay below are two straight lines we below are two straight lines find the size of angle x so we know that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees i did higher last week and opposite angles are equal so if this one's 20 degrees this one is also 20 degrees and if this one's 160, then this one's 160 degrees. And that's because opposite angles are equal. There's lots of higher videos on my on my page. If you go to um, Aiming for a Grade 7, there's loads and loads of videos in there. There's also lots on my YouTube. Okay, so angle X is 160 degrees. On the diagram, RS is parallel to TU. So parallel lines like this, which angle is vertically opposite to G? So we can just say opposite. We don't have to say vertically opposite, but G is opposite angle F. So a few rules to remember. If you've got parallel lines, alternate angles are equal. So that's the Z. So I remember alternate, And you've got the F as well. And I remember corresponding for that, which I know doesn't make any sense, but... Um, it just helps me to remember that the Z angles are alternate angles and the F angles are corresponding. So alternate angles are equal. Corresponding angles are equal. And then the other one that you've got is cointerior. Now, cointerior, they aren't equal. A C like this is called cointerior. Yeah, this is prep for paper two foundation. Um, and those two would add together to make 180 and those two would add together to make 180 and that's co-interior. This is all going to be helpful for end of year exam, massively. <laughs> Don't laugh at corresponding. That's a perfectly good way to remember how to do it. Zultanate and corresponding. There we go. Uh, but opposite angles, they are literally just opposite each other. So G and F in that question. Question number four, DEF is a straight line. CE is equal to CF. So we see these little lines here that tells you that they're the same length, that they're equal in length. And that means that it's an isosceles triangle. So we've got two angles here that are the same. So the first thing we're going to do is 180 take away 40, which is 140. And then we're going to divide that by two. So 140 divided by two is 70. And that means we've got 70 degrees here and 70 degrees here. Once we've done that, we can then look at this line here. So we've got 110 degrees on this side. And the reason we know that is because angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So a really common mistake that I see is people thinking that these three or these four have to add up to make 180. But it's just at each point. So this makes 180 degrees here at this point, And there'd be 180 degrees here at this point. Anywhere, there'd be 180 degrees. So we've got 180 degrees here. So this one's 110. And now I want to look at that triangle there. And we know that the angles inside that triangle have to add up to 180 degrees. Yeah, this is um, the topics from the Edexcel playlist. There's going to be so much crossover. It doesn't really matter what example you're doing. If you're doing foundation, um, then 
it's going to be helpful for you. It's so much of the same content. Um, so I've got 110 degrees and 15 degrees in that triangle at the minute. And that adds up to 125. And so what's left is 180 minus 125. If there's more on the floor, borrow from next door, although you've all got a calculator for this next paper. Unless you're doing OCR. I think OCR might have a uh, non-calculator next. I think they had a calculator first. Forgive me if I'm wrong. Find the size of the angle marked Y. There we go, 55 degrees. If they asked you for reasons, reasons that we've used, base angles in an isosceles triangles are equal. Angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees and angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees as well. Cool, so that's that one. Great, using the scale. No, I'm not constructing, not on TikTok Live. That is not for me. Right, question number six. Mrs. Rogers is tiling her bathroom wall. The bathroom wall is 360 centimetres long and 240 centimetres uh, high. Each tile is 20 by 20. Now, there's lots and lots of different ways to do this question. This is the list for Edexcel, but if it's AQA, it's going to be helpful to you as well. There's so much crossover. If you're doing foundation, don't worry about what exam board you're doing. Just have a watch. Um, Mrs. Rogers is tiling her bathroom wall. Sorry, right. So there's loads of different ways to do this. You can work out the area of the wall work out the area of the tile and divide. I personally prefer actually seeing how many tiles would fit across. So I'm gonna see how many 20 centimeters would fit across this way. And for that, I'm gonna do 360 divided by 20. So how many would fit going across? And if we did that in our calculator or in our heads, same as 36 divided by two, it would be 18. So we're gonna have 18 columns of tiles, if you like. I'm doing this as if it was calculated because that's what most of the country have on Tuesday. Um, 240 divided by 20 is going to tell me how many tiles fit going up the wall this way. So 240 divided by 20 is 12. 24 divided by 2. So now I know I've got 18 columns of tiles and 12 rows of tiles. So if I do 18 times 12, that will tell me how many tiles would fit on this wall. So 18 times 12 is 216. But like I said, the other way is to do 360 times 240, 20 times 20, and then just divide to see how many would fit on the wall. You can do that as well. Okay. Tiles are sold in boxes of six. So I need 216 tiles. So let's do 216 divided by six to find out how many boxes we need to buy. 216 divided by six is 36. Now, if that was a decimal... You can't round it down. You've got to round up. Even if it was 0.2, whatever, you'd have to round up because we can't go into B&Q and say, excuse me, I'd like to buy 36.2 boxes or whatever. You've got to buy an extra box, okay? So if that was a decimal, always make sure you round up. Yeah, this is for the calculus paper on Tuesday, but all of it's relevant. There's nothing here that isn't going to be featured on any of your exam boards or um, whatever you're doing on Tuesday, as long as you're doing foundation. These are foundation questions, although by the end, we'll get into the higher. Uh, good, 36 boxes. And each box is £8, so £8 multiplied by 36. Let's just times that by 8. £288. And that's it. Normally on those questions, it's like five marks and they'll say she gets 10% off because she works at B&Q or something. So um, that's, uh, yeah, that's that. Right, seven, Olivia does her maths, French and history homework. It takes her a total of three hours. She spends 70 minutes on history, 15 minutes less on her maths homework than on her history homework. How many minutes does she spend doing her French homework? Okay, let's convert time. So converting time is on the list. Three hours, 60 minutes in each hour. So that's 180 minutes. We've then got 70 minutes on the history homework and 15 minutes less on her maths homework. So 70 take away 15 is 55. So we've got 70 on history, 55 on maths. And then we've got to add on her French homework and that needs to make 180 altogether. So let's add up what we've got so far. 70 add 55 is 125. And then we just know that if we subtract that from 180, we're going to get how much more we need. So 180, take away that answer. So make sure everything you type in your calculator, that's probably my biggest advice, actually. Everything you type in your calculator on Tuesday, you're also writing down. Um, because if it goes wrong, you want those method marks. Cool. 55 minutes. Amazing. Also, make sure you reset your calculator before Tuesday. I've put a video up on my uh, page on how to reset your calculator. That's there if you need it after this. Okay, question number eight. Write down the translation vector. So a translation is when you just move it. 
Um, I like to play that annoying song when I teach that in class. Um, A to B. Now this, again, really, really make sure that you're looking where you're going from and where you're going to. Exam boards like to mess you up here. Naturally, our brains want to go from B to A because it's like going from left to right the way we read. So they often like to go A to B because you you're really having to read the question, right? So always make sure you're going from where they say to where you're going, right? A to B. So we're going from A to B. So I'm starting on this one. Now, it doesn't matter what corner you pick, but you need to pick a corner and you're going to that same corner on the other shape. So that is always another another common mistake is that people go from here to like here. Make sure you're going to the same point on the other shape. So we're going one to the left. So that is minus one. Your top number is left and right. And your bottom number is up and down. Positive is right, negative is left. Positive is up, negative is down. So if we're going one to the left, that top number needs to be minus one. And then we're going up. One, two, three, four, five. Because remember, we're going to the same point on the other shape. And up five is just five like that. There shouldn't be... These dotted lines are for us to put our answer on. But a vector is just two numbers. There's not a line in it. It's not a fraction. These dotted lines are just for your answer. Minus one, five would be the vector that would take you from A to B. This is relevant to all exam boards. Number nine, describe fully the single transformation. So we've got four transformations that we need to remember. We've got translation, which was that one I just did up there. You've got rotation, which is when it turns and you'll see people start to put their hands up in the exam for tracing paper. You've got reflection and you've got enlargement. This um, question at the bottom, decline. Looking at this question at the bottom, has it been just moved? Well, no, because it's not the same orientation, is it? Has it been turned? Yeah, kind of, but it's just a fluke that actually you can rotate that one. I probably wouldn't go with rotation for this one. Enlargement is when it's bigger or smaller. This, to me, the obvious choice here is reflected. So we want to think about that mirror line. So we want to say, right, where is that mirror line? Where it's been, how has it been reflected? And we want to go like here. So it needs to be, oh, here actually, it needs to be exactly halfway between. Now, if you've got one, two, three, four, five squares, we need to go two and a half. So that would be my mirror line, which looks a bit odd, but it's exactly the same. Yeah, so this paper is Corbett Maths paper. Is that there on everyone's? That's quite annoying, isn't it? Paper two, set B. Um, it's on, if you Google it, foundation, obviously. Um, okay, so it's been reflected. That gets us a mark. In the line, now here's where your other mark comes in. We need to tell them what that line is. Now that line goes through 0 0.5 on the x-axis. So it's going to be x equals 0 0.5. So any line this way, is, zero point, is um, x equals, if it's going dead up. Any line that way is y equals. I did higher last week, but if you go on my page, there's loads of videos, um, and also on my YouTube, there's loads of videos as well. Um, x equals 0 0.5. So that would be both marks for that. Someone asked me about this. Um, can it be 5 minus 1 as well? No, it has to be that way up, because they told us to go from A to B, not B to A. It has to be A to B, so it has to be one to the left and five up, and that's the only way you can write that. I did hire last week. There might be an enlargement question, I'm not sure. Let's see. Yes, here, we'll do that one in a minute. Rotate shape A 180 degrees, about centre minus one, two. Do I have tracing paper to hand? Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Right, here's some tracing paper. Rotate A 180 degrees. Now, 180 degrees is a nice question because you're just going to turn it upside down and 90 degrees people go wrong more because they go clockwise when it says anti-clockwise or anti-clockwise when it says clockwise. So just remember that if you're rotating, you need to go pay attention to if it says clockwise or anti-clockwise. But if it's 180 degrees, you're good because it's just going to go upside down. So rotate shape A, 180 degrees, centre minus one, two. Now that's really important. That's the point that you're sticking your pen in. Okay, so minus one, two is here and here is the shape so let's draw around it oh, I've got such a good hack for you all on this one where is my uh, compass over there okay right like that now I like to draw an arrow in it as well because I just feel like it's so much easier to see when you turn it when you've gone halfway um, right so if it's at 90 degrees 
it would be like that and your arrow would be pointing sideways. That would be clockwise, obviously anti-clockwise you'd go sorry that would be clockwise anti-clockwise is going against the way a clock goes so that'd be like that but they've asked us for 180 degrees so i'm going to keep turning it until that arrow is facing down yeah year six is also as difficult as this but there's a wide range as i'm sure you're aware of students abilities in maths so we cater for everybody right here's my hack get your stabby thing right and go and you can do this in your exam because your papers get scanned in. No one's ever going to know that you've made a hole in it. There you go. All four corners. And then when you move it, boom. You've got four dots to help you. ta -da! No, it doesn't say clockwise or anti-clockwise. That's a really good question because it's 180 degrees. So it doesn't actually matter which way I turned. So if you imagine I went um, that way for 180 degrees, it would get to the same point. So it's only going to say clockwise or anti-clockwise if it's 90 degrees. So it said, put it around that point, put your pen on the point, and then that helps you to pivot it at the correct point. La, 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 la. Round it goes until it's upside down. So it's the same in both directions. You can draw in pencil or pen. I would advise you to draw in pencil um, because then if you go wrong, you can rub it out. Um, but if you were to go wrong and you were to clearly cross it out and draw it elsewhere, that would be absolutely fine. Yeah, you do get tracing paper in the exam. If they haven't given it to you on your desk, you can put your hand up and ask for it. Uh, it's a tricky one because if they put it on your desk, you're going to think you need it. Um, but if they don't put it on your desk, then they've got to hand it all out. But I think if people... Um, start asking for it they'll hand it out to everyone if that makes sense so it should be obvious whether you need it or not yeah ask for it cool shown below is a rectangle drawn on a coordinate grid enlarge the shape by scale factor two using center of enlargement minus one zero now this is quite a challenging question so i'm going to go quite slowly here i normally go quick minus one zero is there hopefully you're okay with that so that is the coordinate that we're making it bigger from now when you enlarge a shape, you can't just make it bigger and draw it anywhere you like. This is foundation, but I think this will be on higher as well, to be honest. Transformations can be on higher or foundation. Enlarge the shape by scale factor two. So that means we need to make it twice as big. Now, if you get stuck, it's Corbett Maths. Just Google this and it'll come up. Um, if you get stuck, just draw it two times bigger anywhere. Just draw it two times bigger anywhere. If you get stuck and you don't know where to draw it, just draw it two times bigger anywhere because that will get you two marks or one mark, depending on what it's out of. However, what you should do is count the gap from the point to the corners. So at the minute, if you look at this point and you go one to the left and two up to get to this corner. So if we're drawing it twice as big, instead of going one to the left and two up, we need to go two to the left and four up. So that coordinate has doubled from here that coordinate has doubled and gone there now let's look at this corner at the minute it's three across and two up so instead of going three across and two up we need to go six across and four up so it's gone there now this corner is one across and uh, sorry one down three across so to double that gap we need to go two down and six across. Yeah, this is Corbett Maths predicted paper for paper two. It's not a guarantee, hence why it will say on the list it said transformations. So Corbett Maths has done a translation, a, rot a reflection, a rotation, and a so I'm doing a bit of everything. It's just an estimate. You wouldn't get four questions on this topic, but they've done a bit of everything, which is really helpful. And hopefully you can see where this last coordinate's going to go. Instead of going one across and one down, we're going two across and two down so that coordinate is now there and now you can just join them up to be honest you can just do one of those coordinates and then draw it two times bigger from that one coordinate if that makes sense um but it's quite a nice check to do them all isn't it and yeah i know i'm using a protractor to do a ruler terribly disorganized should really have a ruler to hand but i don't there we go and actually a lovely thing happens you can actually join them up and it looks like a tunnel 
<laughs> so you should always, with an enlargement, be able to connect the points from the original shape and the new shape. Although it's quite odd to get one within it like that. Normally it's like... Oh, goodness, that was drawn terribly. Normally it's like that, you see, and it all goes back like that, but still. It doesn't matter that it's not AQA. It's all very relevant, don't worry. You don't have to connect. You don't have to connect. That's just me doing it because I think it looks pretty. If you do, you don't. You get marks either way. It doesn't matter. As long as this was correct, that's all that matters. No, you don't have to draw the lines. That's just me making it look pretty. Right. Let me just quickly up here do them all. So here's a circle. Wow. Did you see how good that was? I drew that freehand and everything. Right. Centre of the circle. The middle of a circle is called the centre. Centre. Then you've got the radius. I don't know where to label this. Radius. And then you've got a tangent. Sorry, a diameter. <laughs> I'm losing the plot. Diameter, which is all the way across. And you've got a tangent, which just touches the edge of the circle and carries on. And then you've got a chord. Now, a chord just goes across the circle, but not through the middle. Because if it went through the middle, it would be called the diameter. Then the area of that bit is called a segment. It looks a bit like a chocolate orange or just an orange, orange segment. <laughs> it doesn't have to be chocolate. And then a sector is like a pizza slice. Sector. Chord is that one, tangent is that one, segment is that area, sector is that area, radius and diameter. An arc is just a little bit of the circumference. <laughs> so there you go, that's like a... An arc might look like that, just a little bit of the circumference. And then this one says, draw and shade in a segment of the circle. So let's draw a segment. So we're going to draw a chord... And then shade in the segment. So that's an arc. That's a segment. And people always confuse segment and sector. A sector is like a pizza slice. How can we remember that? What could we put on our pizza to remember that it's a sector? Um, sec second hands. Seconds. If you have extra leftover food, you can put the seconds on your pizza. I don't know. Let me know if you can think of a good way to remember it. Cheese. How does cheese help you remember? Sausage for S. Yeah, but this one's called segment. The S is no good. I'm trying to say, how can we... I guess segment does look like an orange segment. Segment and sector. How are we going to differentiate? I don't know. Here's a segment and a sector is like a pizza slice. So come up with your own way. So remember those two. Orange sector. Oh, I've done sector on both. What a lemon. Segment. An orange segment and a sector of pizza. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Someone says screenshot and zoom in. There you go. <laughs> Do you want me to put it up? Screenshot. Quick. There's your circle. Just call it the crust. Yeah, you're not getting any marks for that, I'm afraid. Right, a semicircle. <laughs> a semicircle has a diameter of 20. Calculate the perimeter. So the reason it's called a perimeter now is because it's not actually a circle anymore, it's a semicircle. So the circumference of a circle is pi d. That's the distance around the outside of a whole circle. So to get the distance around the outside of a circle, you do pi times the diameter, which is the distance across the middle. So in this case, that's going to be pi times 20. But pi times 20 would get you the entire edge of the circle, the entire circumference. We don't want all the way around the circle. We only want to go halfway. So we want to go from here to here. So we're going to do pi times 20 and then we're going to divide it by 2. So pi times 20 divided by 2 and it's going to say in our calculator that that's 10 pi. So when that comes up, um, because we're not asked to give this answer in terms of pi, we're going to get that as a decimal. So let's press our SD button. There we go, 31.41. However, that at the minute is this bit. It's the distance of that curved bit because it's half 
of the circumference. If it was on a non-calculated paper, you'd just leave it as 10 pi and then you'd add the 20 afterwards. So if it was a, because this is on a, we're going to add 20 because we need this bit as well. So the perimeter is all the way around the outside. So I'm going to add 20 and then my answer is 51.4. Again, making sure that everything you type in the calculator, you're typing there. I'm doing it for LXL because that's what the majority of students do. Um, but if you had a non calculated paper, you would just leave it as 10 pi add 20. And that would be your final answer. You can't collect those two together because they're not like terms. So that's a, it's meters and meters. Oh, you're absolutely right. Typo. I mean, I would take it up with Mr. Corbett, but he's kind of amazing and has made all these amazing resources. So I'm not I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to anger him. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. So this is half the circumference of a circle. So I've done pi d, which gets us the entire circumference of a circle. Pi d, d is the diameter. So pi times 20. But then I didn't want the entire circle. I just wanted halfway. So I've divided it by 2, which got me 31.41. And then I added on 20. 20, a red vector, as, as I said that, <laughs> added on 20 to get the entire distance around the outside of a shape. No, so look, if you're doing foundation, don't worry about what exam board you're doing because I'm covering so much content right now that it's all going to be helpful to you. No, nothing wrong with factorising it. Whoever just wrote that, that's absolutely fine. Pi r squared is for area. If you're doing higher and you can't do some of this, don't worry at all. The grade boundaries are really low to pass on higher, so I'm sure you'll be fine. Can I go back for a second? Yeah. Yes, definitely this will help with functional skills. Yes, this is helpful for AQI, AQA. 2 pi r also, yeah, so someone said you can also do 2 pi r. That's absolutely fine because 2 radi radii, 2 radius is the same as the diameter. <laughs> Thank you for the compliments on my hands. Uh, no, I did hire last week, um, but there's lots of videos on my YouTube and also lots of videos on my TikTok page. Aiming for a grade 7. There's a, paid, there's a, um, uh, a playlist up. Right, shown below is a circular photo surrounded by a frame. The photo has a radius of 12 and the frame has a width of 4. Work out the area of the frame. So we want this area. Now, the only way to get that area is to do the area of the whole thing, take away the area of the middle. So we're going to do the area of the big circle, take away the area of the little circle. That's my plan here. And that's going to get us the difference, which will be that bit. Yeah? Cool. So we're going to do pi times the radius squared. So area is pi times the radius squared. Now, the radius of this big circle is going from the middle to the edge. So 12 takes us to there, but it doesn't get us all the way to the edge. And we know that that bit is 4. So hopefully it makes sense if I say that the radius of the big circle is 16 because it would be all the way to the edge. So we've got to do pi times 16 squared for that big circle and then pi times 12 squared for that little circle and then take them away. And I'm going to just do it all in my calculator all at once um, because why not? Pi times 16 squared, I'm going to do in the first bracket. Take away pi times 12 squared. Always use brackets if you square a negative number as well. That's not relevant for this question, but let's write down 112 pi just because then we've got a note of it. And then press SD. So if you are doing a um, non-calculated paper, I mean, hopefully you wouldn't get numbers that big, but you could always leave it in terms of pi, which would be leaving it as the 112 pi bit. 751 point, let's go 0.9. Hasn't said what to round it to, has it? There we go. 351.9. It will say in the GCSE what to round it to. 
so how did I get 16? So 12 went from the middle of the circle to here, but for the area of the big circle, I needed the radius of the big circle. And the radius of the big circle is from the middle all the way to the edge. So I just needed to add on four to that 12 to get out to the edge of that big circle. Imagine that wasn't there. From the middle to the edge would be 16. Pi times 16 squared. Yes, this is foundation, but a lot of the questions have crossover to higher as well. Okay, question 15. Which line is parallel to ED? So two lines that are going in exactly the same direction that never ever meet, they are parallel like that. And two lines that meet at a right angle, they are perpendicular. So which line is parallel to ED? Get your guesses in. Yeah, BC, BC. Yeah, well done. So we're just going to write BC. Don't do a comma, don't do an arrow. You're literally just saying BC. That is how you, how you do a line. Yeah, well done, everyone saying it. BC, BC, BC. Which line is perpendicular to ED? So which line is at right angles to this line? It's just CD. There we go. We've got to hope that comes up because that's a lovely question. Write 5,725 to the nearest 100. Right. When I round, I remember chop, <laughs> chop, check, change or chop, I don't know. Round to the nearest 100. So the nearest 100, this is our hundreds column. So we're going to chop after that. And then we check the next number and then we see if we need to change it. So chop, check, change. Yes, um, so two doesn't round up, does it? Two stays the same. So we've got five, seven, and then we need to put the zeros in to keep that seven in the hundreds column. So there are placeholders. So 5,700. And that's it. Cool. Next one, write it to two decimal places. So there's my first decimal place. There's my second decimal place. Chop, check, seven rounds up. So that's going to be 83.08. Seven rounded up. C, write 6.35 correct to one decimal place. So chop, check, and change. It is 6.4. And then last but not least, write this to one significant figure. Now, one significant figure means just one number. This Significant means important. So you're allowed to keep the most important number. Now, the most important number is that one. If I said you can have one of these amounts of money, you'd want 100 quid over 20 quid or 9 quid or 30p, wouldn't you? So 100 is your most important. So we're going to chop, check, two rounds down. So it's just 100. And you've got to keep those zeros there to hold the place value. Any questions on that page? Hi, Tommy. <laughs> I'm not going to say how many marks. You can Google how much it has been in previous years. Um, but this year, who knows what's going to happen? I wouldn't expect it to change too much, though. This last one. So perpendicular means at right angles and parallel is when the two lines are going in exactly the same direction. The last one there is going to be 100 because one is the most sig significant figures. One is the most significant. One is the most important number. So we're going to say one we will keep and then we check the next number. Two rounds down, so it's going to stay 100. So you're only allowed to write one number that isn't a zero. I think this, question, this paper is long. I'm going to be here a while. Might go get some water, actually. Um, I think the way... Yeah, look, 37, 39. The way that Corbett Maths has done it, I don't... I, yeah, 54. There's no way I'm getting to the end of this, but um, I'll keep going until I um, lose people. But I've got 1,600 people watching at the minute, so I'll keep going until it dwindles, um, but I might go grab some water. Right, from the list of numbers, write down multiples of seven. So multiples are your seven times table, basically. 
So the multiples of 7 are 7, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42, uh, 49. I don't need to go any higher than that because they haven't gone any higher than that. So write down the multiples of 7 from this list. So 7 is a multiple of 7. Oh, I shouldn't circle them because I need them for part B, don't I? 7, 21. And that's it. 7 and 21. Then write down the multiples of 5. Well, that's the 5 times table. They're a bit easier to spot, aren't they? So 5, no, 10, no, 15, no, 20, no, 25, 30, and 45. So definitely know how to find your multiples, know how to find your factors, know how to find your uh, prime numbers, your square numbers, and your cube numbers. Yes, for the last question, you can write DC instead of CD. It doesn't matter which way you go on the line. Good question. Okay, Martin is walking from Antrim to Randallstown. Work out the distance from Antrim to Randallstown. So Antrim is three and a third miles this way. And Randallstown is one and a third, one and three quarters, sorry, miles this way. Now, I don't see you getting a question like this because you've got a calculator now. Um, OCR, you haven't got a calculator, so you need to know how to do this. Make them both top heavy and make the denominators the same. Uh, but yeah, for the rest of you, you've got a calculator. Now, mixed numbers in your calculators, you're probably all familiar with the fraction button. If you want to get a mixed number, you see it's in yellow just there. So anything in yellow on your calculator, we need to press shift first. So shift and then the fraction button. And now you've got a mixed number. OK, so uh, one and three quarters is the first number. Add and then again, shift fraction to get another mixed number, three and a third. And the reason we're adding is because one is. Uh, oh, there you go. 61 over 12. So that is five, so 61 over 12, which is five holes, because 12 goes into 61 five hole times, that's 60, with one left over out of 12. So it's, Randallstown is one and three quarter miles that way, Antrim is three and a third miles that way, so how far are they apart? We need to add those distances together. This is specific, I'm doing the Edexcel one, but it's relevant to every exam board. I should really write that down somewhere. The content is definitely for Edexcel. You add because one is like if I was here and I said, right, I've got uh, two miles that way to my friend and two miles that way to my friend. Then the difference between where my friends are is four because you're going all the way from this person all the way across to that one. So that was why we added them together. Cool. No, if you put the answer there, you're fine. Do definitely put it in the box. But as an examiner, we we have to look at everything. If the answer's there, it's fine. But obviously, make their life easy. Don't make it hard for them. Don't go trying to hide hard uh, bleh, hide the answer. The easier it is to see, the easier for the examiner to give you the marks. It would specify how you must leave it, but normally an exam, if you've ever looked at a mark scheme, it will say OE after the answer, which means or equivalent. So as long as your answer is equivalent to what you're writing, um, unless it specifies. OK, find the area of this rectangle includes suitable units. When it says includes suitable units, you are getting one mark for writing the units, right? So even if you don't know how to do this question... You're going to write centimetre squared on the answer line because we will have to give you a mark for that, even if you write nothing else. OK, so, you know, centimetres and centimetres, the area is going to be centimetre squared. If it says include units and it's on a back question of the paper and you don't know how to do it, just st stick centimetre squared there because we know the area is going to be in centimetre squared and that will be worth a mark. OK, so we've got this times this for the area of a rectangle. So 9 over 10 times 1 over 4. And we know that when we times fractions, it's the nicest of all of them because we can just do the top times the top and the bottom times the bottom. So it'd be 9 over 40 centimetres squared. And it might be that, I mean, it would say, give your answer as a this, give your answer as a that. 9 over 40 is uh, 0 0.225. So it'd be okay to write that as well. Absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that. Great. Question number 20. Jamin is cutting lengths of string from a roll that is nine and a third metres long. Each length of the string is a ninth of a metre long. How many lengths of string? So we're dividing here. We're saying how many of these fit into this? So nine and a third 
divided by a ninth. We're saying how many can fit in. And again, I'm going to do that by using my calculator because it's a calculator paper now. So shift fraction for a mixed number. Yeah, there's no way it's worth three marks. I know. I feel like Corbett's quite generous with his uh, allocation of marks, but it's good practice. So there we go. There we go. And it's 84. Much more likely to see that question on a non-calculator paper, but we've already done the non-calculator. So there we go. It's too late for this. Bye. Okay, bye. Right, find the reciprocal of 0 0.32. Now, reciprocals are when you turn a fraction upside down or you turn an integer upside down. So the reciprocal of 5 is 1 over 5. The reciprocal of 2 is 1 over 2. The reciprocal of 2 over 3 is 3 over 2. That's what the reciprocal means, okay? So if it's a fraction, you're turning it upside down. If it's an integer, you're making it 1 over that, Okay. The reciprocal of 0 0.32, well, it's hard to do that because it isn't a fraction. So what I'm actually going to do is write it as a fraction first. 0 0.32 is 32 over 100. And now we can turn it upside down. So 100 over 32. And you can simplify it if you like. It would probably specify how you have to give it. But as long as you did that, it's fine. Yeah, paper two for everyone is on Tuesday. This is going to help you for any exam board. Why 100? So 0 0.32, to write that as a fraction, it is 32 over 100. But if you weren't sure, let's just put 0 0.32 in my calculator. 0 0.32, I've just typed it in, I've hit equals, and it's told me it's 8 over 25. So we could change that to 25 over 8 to get the reciprocal, which is the same as what I've written, it's just simplified. So if you weren't sure... And you just thought, well, I don't know, let's have a go. 0 0.32 is 8 over 25, so the reciprocal would be 25 over 8. There we go. Write these numbers in order of size, start with the smallest first. Now, all of these are quite nice denominators. We could make them all out of 30, couldn't we? We could make these all out of 30 if we wanted to. And if this was a non calculated paper, that's how I would do this question. I would make them all out of the same denominator. I just did this on YouTube, actually, a few days ago. So I want to make all these denominators the same. But we've got a calculator. So do you know what? I'm just going to put it in as a calculator. 7 over 10 is 0 0.7. 3 over 5, 3 divided by 5, or 3 over 5. Press the SD button is 0 0.6. 8 over 15 is 0 0.53 recurring. So 0 0.533333. Let's put 0 0.533 and I'll put the dot there. And then 2 thirds is 0 0.666 recurring. So 0 0.666, let's just put that. And now what I would do when you're comparing decimals... Always make them the same length. So there's three numbers after the decimal point here, three numbers after the decimal point here. Let's make this 600 and let's make this 700. It just makes it so much easier to see which one's smaller and which one's bigger. So the first, the smallest would be three fifths. No, eight fifteenths. And then three fifths. And then two thirds. And then seven tenths. Because otherwise what I see people do is they say, well, zero point than 0 0.533 because they think 7 is smaller than 533. So just adding in those zeros helps you to see that actually that 7 is bigger and therefore that's a bigger decimal. So always make them the same length. Okay. But again, like I said, I've just done that on YouTube. So if that was tricky, go and watch my YouTube video on that if you want. Okay. 23A, write 0 0.4 as a percentage. Now, you can type 0 0.4 in your calculator We've got a calculator now, and it will tell you it's two fifths. You might find that helpful. So two fifths, we know that percentage is out of 100, right? So 0 0.4, we know is four out of 10 or two fifths. What do we need to do to make it out of 100? Well, let's look at four tenths. We've times the bottom by 10, so we need to times the top by 10, it's 40%. So 0 0.4 is 40%. 0.04 is 4%. So it has to be over in that column if you wanted to get 4. Great. Right, 0.06. Oh, there you go. 
read my mind. 0.07 is a percent, that's 7%. And again, if you use your calculator, 0.07, hit the equals button, it even tells you that that is 7 out of 100. And so that's easy for us to see that because it's out of 100, it's 7%. Right, candles normally cost £6 each. Two websites have special offers. Now, when you have these comparison questions, I really like to do um, two, like a line down the middle and then lay out my answer so that the examiner can see, like, I've done it this way and I've done it this way and, and this is my final conclusion. So remember, when they ask you a question, you must answer it. Uh, you can't just leave your working and expect them to draw the conclusion for you. So it says, candles cost £6 each. Two websites have a special offer. Call it Mass Candles, buy three, get one free. Candles are asked 20% off. Laura wants to buy 30 candles. So if she buys three, she gets one free. She buys another three, she gets another one free. She buys another three, she gets another one free. She buys another three, she gets one free. She buys another three, she gets one free. What are we up to now? Four, eight, 12, 16, 20. She buys another three, she gets one free. She buys another three, she gets one free. And she buys another three. Now, four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. She's going to have to buy those two. And she's not going to do the deal. <laughs> How do you know that Laura is married? Maybe she is focusing on her marriage. She's buying candles for a romantic evening. Three, one free. Three, one free. Three, one free. So she's buying these ones. And these are the ones she's getting for free, yeah? So she buys three and she gets one free. I'm doing it on this side. So she buys three candles and she gets that one for free. She buys another three and she gets that one for free. So I've boxed off these ones because this is how many she's going to have to buy to get them for free. So three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21, 22, 23. So she's buying 23 candles and they cost six pound each. So 23 times by six is 138 pounds. Now at Candles Are Us, she's got to buy all 30, but then she gets 20% off. So... Uh, we're going to do 30 times by 6, which is 180. But then we get 20% off. Now, with your calculator, the easiest way to get 20% off, you want 80%. And the easiest way, if you want 80%, times by 0 0.8. Okay? 80% as a decimal is 0 0.8. So 180 times 0 0.8. That is going to be the easiest way to get 80% times by 0.8 and it's 144. So once you've done that, you have to answer their question. So you can't just do that and be like, yeah, it's obvious she's going to go there. You must answer their question or you're going to lose that fourth mark. OK, so we need to say she should buy them from Corbett Maths Candles. Okay, absolutely must. Or sometimes it's a yes or no question. Because she wanted 20% off, we always start with 100%. 100% minus 20% means we wanted 80%. You can just find 10%, double it and take it off, but it's going to take you a lot longer. So you could do 10% is 18 and another 10% is another 18 and that's £36 and you can take it off. That's absolutely fine. So you can do that as well. Someone's saying, can I do 180 times 0 0.2? So if we do 180 times 0 0.2, that would be 36. And that tells you then how much to take off because I found 20%. Yeah, absolutely. So some of you saying find 20% and take it off. So 180 times 0 0.2 is 36. And then you can take that off. But that's two steps. And if you do 180 times 0 0.8, you've already taken the 0 0.2 off. And you get straight to the answer. Okay, question 25. I still haven't got that water. Great. The value of a painting rises. Now, oh, write this formula down, please. Change over original times by 100. If you are asked for a percentage increase or a percentage decrease... 
I'm just going to pause a sec while you all write that down. Change over original times by 100. How much is it changed by over the original times by 100? Sorry, I needed water. Woo, right. For those of you asking for help with your mocks, year 10 mocks, all of this is relevant. Yeah, works for profit, works for loss. Um, if you're asked for a percentage increase or, yeah, percentage profit or percentage loss, this is the formula you're going to need. So how much is it changed by? So from 120,000 to 192,000, we're going to subtract, and that's gone up by 72,000. So I'm going to do 72,000 over 120,000 times by 100. So that's my working for this. It's the change over original times by 100. If you're looking for the paper, it is Corbett Maths Practice Paper Set B, Paper 2, Set B. There we go. So it is the change, what it changed by, over the original times by 100. Change over original times by 100. You can equal it before you times by 100 or you can do it in a fraction like I've done it. Makes no difference, should get the same. 60% increase. Change over original times by 100. 60%. So the 72,000 was the change. So it's what it changed by. So I did 192,000 take away 120,000. And that was 72,000. It's relevant for all exam boards. It's particularly relevant for Edexcel, but there's nothing I'm doing that wouldn't help you all. I'm not doing limits because... Oh, you know, I think error intervals is on the foundation, isn't it? Okay, the value of a car decreases by 7.2% each year. When bought, the car was bought six... Oh, I can't talk. When bought, the car cost 6,200. Work out how much the car will be worth after one year. Right. This is compound interest, or the same as compound interest, but it's depreciation. Now, depreciation is on your list for Edexcel for Tuesday. But compound interest, depreciation, it's all really relevant. Now, if you started with 100%, and the car has gone down in value by 7.2%, you need to think, what percentage would I be left with? Okay, there is some topic on your exam on Tuesday where it's something's going to go down in value. You're going to start with 100, and you're going to take away 7.2. And that tells me that I'm left with 92.8% of the original. AQA is fine, it's still going to help you with AQA. 92.8% of the original amount. So I'm going to write down, I want 92.8% of the amount. And hopefully that makes sense to you. So depreciates or decreases by 7.2 means it's going down by 7.2%. And that means that you're left with 92.8%. Now I want you to write that as a decimal. So that would be 0 0.928. And then we're going to do 6,200 times by 0 0.928 to the power of the number of years. Now, actually here, they've only said one year. So we're just going to go to the power of one. Okay. So let's type that on my calculator. 6,200 times 0 0.928 to the power of one. But I mean, let's put it in there just to show you. But you don't need to put in one if it is one. There we go. So it's now worth five thousand seven hundred and fifty three pounds and sixty pence. And then it says, how many years will it take the car to have a value of less than four thousand? So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to use my left arrow and I'm going to go back to that power 
And I'm just going to delete that and I'm going to change it. So how much would the car be worth after two years? Let's hit equals. Hmm, still too much. Okay, so let's go back and change it to three years and so on. I might have to do a big jump. Oh, it's come down a bit. Let's try five. No, it's still over 4,000. Let's go seven. Ah, oh, seven's gone under, but let's just check if six was. Yes, six was. So the amount of money times by 0.928 to the power of six. 3,900. So we just need to say six years. So I'm going to put 6,200 times 0.928 to the power of six equals 3,959,86. So it's six years. There we go. Why 0 0.928? So the car's gone down in value by 7.2%. So I did 100% take away 7.2% and that left me with 92.8%. And to use this method with the timesing by the decimal, you have to write it as a decimal. So 92.8% is 0 0.928 as a decimal. Okay, depreciation definitely coming up. Felicity has two boxes of counters, each with an equal ratio of black and white beads. In box A, 54 of the beads are black and 36 are white. There are 162 white beads in box B. How many beads are there in the two boxes in total? So they have an equal ratio of black and white. In box A, we've got 54 to 36, black to white. Now, what I'm going to do is simplify that ratio. Now, you shouldn't do this, but you can do this. If you get your calculator again and you put 36 on the top and 54 on the bottom, I'm just going to put the smaller one on the top just for ease. Your calculator will simplify that for you and then you can rewrite it as three to two. Technically not correct, but a little hack to be able to simplify a ratio, just write it as a fraction. Um, so yeah, it's a bit easier than doing it. You can just say, all oh, right, I'm going to divide both sides by two, divide both sides by three, whatever it can be, right? But way easier to just do that and then see what each of the numbers becomes and then you can just use that. Okay, three to two. There are 162 white beads in box B. So we know the ratio has got to be the same. It's got to be three to two. So if the ratio is three to two and the white beads is 162, then I've got 81 and 81. Yeah, shall I jump to simultaneous equations after this? Because I think that's going to be the highest, hardest thing on foundation on Tuesday. And then they're all 81. So how many beads are there in the two box in total? Well, let's do 81 times five. So there's 405 in this, in this box and 54 add 36. So there is 90 in this box and then 405 add 90 is 495. Yeah, should I do simultaneous equations next? Vote. How did I get 81? So I knew that these two lines had to make 162. So I halved that because they had to go add together to make 162. So then I, I knew if those two lines were 81, then those lines had to be 81 as well because with ratio, they all have to be the same. I love doing these little lines. Okay. I saw a simultaneous equation at the back. Yeah, there you go. It's going to be helpful in whatever example you're doing, but I'm specifically doing the list for Edexcel for Tuesday. Um, but all of this content is going to be uh, helpful for all of you. Right. So with a simultaneous equation, there's lots of different ways I can you can do it, but I'm going to do it my way. So is this big enough? You see this. First thing I would do 
is make the numbers in front of the Y's or whatever number is here in the middle, I would make those ones the same. You absolutely can make these ones the same, but I tend, I find that when I'm examining these and I'm marking them, people go more wrong if they make these the same. So my advice would be to make these the same. So you're trying to find a number that's in the five times table and the three times table, right? And that's gonna be 15. So we wanna make both of these 15. And the easiest way to do that is to times everything on the top by three and times everything on the bottom by five because we want to make both of these 15, okay? So, timesing everything on the top by three. 9x add 15y equals three. Don't forget to multiply the answer as well. People forget that. So then everything on the bottom needs to be times by five. So 10x minus 15y equals 35. There we go. So that's the first step done. So multiply by whatever you need to multiply by to make those two numbers the same. Doesn't matter if one's a plus and one's a minus, we'll sort that out next. Then turn it into a big sum. And you're going to same signs subtract, add if different. So same signs subtract, add if different. So here you've got a plus and a minus. So we're going to add them because they're different, right? Same sign subtract. If they were both pluses, we'd turn this into a big sum and we'd subtract. But I'm going to turn this into a big sum and I'm going to add, okay? Add if different. So if you've got 9x and 10x, that's going to become 19x. These guys are going to cancel out and that will always happen. If these aren't cancelling out, you've done something wrong, okay? And 3 add 35 is 38. And sh you should, at this point, only have that and that, because I multiplied everything here by three and I multiplied everything here by five. So everything on the top row, 3x, 5y and one was three times bigger. So 9x, 15, so 10x, 15y and 35. So then you're looking here and if they're the same signs you subtract and you add if they're different. Okay, same sign, subtract, add if different. I multiply by three and five because I wanted to make these numbers the same. And I knew that the first number in the, their times tables was 15. So to make it 15, I just times by whatever I needed to do to make them both 15. It's a really good question, whoever asked that. Then I had to decide whether I was going to turn it into a big subtraction or a big addition. And because they were the same signs, we were going to uh, same signs subtract, add if different. So because they were different, we added. So 15y add minus 15y is nothing, so it's gone. If it was a negative and a negative, then that's same sign, so you'd subtract and they would still cancel out. So if they're both pluses, a subtraction would cancel them out. If they're both minuses, a subtraction would cancel them out. And if it's a plus and a minus, you're going to add them and that would cancel them out. Yeah? Higher has got a linear and a quadratic, so I don't think you'll get this on higher. So, I'm not done. Yeah, so now we've got 19x is that. So if I divide both sides by 19, x is 2. So 19 lots of x is 38. So x is 2. There we go. Once you've got two, this is the hardest bit now. This is where I lose most people. You need to go back to either one of the original questions. And I, it doesn't matter which one you pick. So let's go back to the very first one. 3x add 5y is 1. You can pick either of the top equations. It doesn't make any difference which one of these you pick. And now I know that x is 2, I can put that in there. I now know that x is 2. So 3 times 2 is 6, add 5y is 1. So I've changed this to be 6 because it's 3 times 2. 6 add 5y is 1. So I'm going to take 6 away from both sides. 5y is minus 5, and then we can divide by 5. So y is minus 1. 
And that's the question done. This is grade five. So if you're doing foundation, this would be probably the most challenging question on the paper. Yes, you could use substitution. I wouldn't use it here because you've not got um, a Y on its own or an X on its own. They've all got numbers in front of them, so it wouldn't be the easiest way to do it. Shall I do another one? I feel like the vibe is that I need to do another one. Shall I do one where they're both negative? Let me just make one up. Let me make one up. Let's make one up. So I will do, hang on, I'll move that out of the way and then if you need it after, come back to me. So let's do 5x minus 2y is 19 and 3x mm, minus 5y, no, 4x minus 5y, can you tell I'm making it up? 4x minus 5y is 5. There you go. That should do it. Okay. Tomorrow I'm tutoring until half eight. So if I do go live tomorrow, it'll be very late. Uh, 5x minus 2y is 19 and 4x minus 5y is 5. Right. So we're going to do exactly the same as we've just done, guys. Okay. And we're going to make these numbers the same. So the first number that's in the two times table and the five times table is going to be 10, right? So we're going to times everything on the top by five and everything on the bottom by two. So then I'm going to rewrite these equations. 25x minus 10y equals oh, 19 times five, anyone? 95. And I'm going to times everything on the bottom row by 2. Okay. Happy so far? So all I've done is make these two numbers the same. I found the first number in both their times tables, and then I've made it that. Your next GCSE is on Tuesday for maths. So now we're going to turn it into a big sum. Same signs subtract add if different. So these are the same signs, so we're going to subtract. 25x take away 8x is 17x. Minus 10y minus minus 10y is zero. You just, just trust me on that one. If you're subtracting and they're the same, it's gone. 95 take away 10 is 85. And then we're going to divide by 17, divide by 17. So x is 85 divided by 17 is 5. So x is 5. Okay. How do you know whether to subtract or add? If these signs are the same, same signs subtract. If one's a plus and one's a minus, add if different. OK, X is five. I'm not done yet because we've only got X. We need to get Y as well. So take either one of these top equations. Let's just take the top one. Five X minus two Y is 19. And we know now that X is five. So let's put that in there. And that's 25 minus two Y is 19. And hopefully you can then see that this needs to be six, doesn't it? 25 take away six makes 19 so 2y is 6 so y is 3 that would have to be 6 in order to make it 19 so y is 3 and x is 5 how do you know what to times by you times by whatever would make these numbers the same so if you do the opposites it will always work but that might not be the smallest If both, both signs are plus, then we would still uh, subtract. Same sign subtract. So if they're both plus or both minus, you're going to subtract. If one's a plus and one's a minus, then you're going to add. 
Yes, you can times the x's instead, but that's when I see people go wrong because normally these are positive and normally these are negative and you kind of want to get rid of any minuses if you can. So I would normally recommend you doing it this way, making these guys the same just because it's so much easier. Why did I put 25? Because we found out that x was 5. So because we knew that x was 5, 5x five is 5 lots of 5, so 25. And 25 take away something had to be 19. So I knew that this had to be 6, which meant that the y was 3. Yeah, so we could have done it. I could have done it properly. Let's do it properly. 25 minus 2y is 19. So I could have taken 25 away from both sides. Minus 2y is minus 6. And then divided by minus 2, so y is 3. That would be the proper way of doing it. But I just figured it was easier to spot that that needed to be 6. 2y was 6 to make it go down to 19. Do another one. <laughs> so demanding. <laughs> Shall I do another one? I got 10y because 10 was the first number in the 2 times table and the 5 times table. Mm, grade five questions. Can we all do the mean from a frequency table? That's probably one of the harder ones. This one. The time taken for 10 students to complete a race is below. Let's do that. Hang on. The time taken for 10 students to complete a race is below. Work out an estimate for the mean time taken. So the mean from a table like this, you need to use the midpoint. So three people took between 20 and 40 seconds. So we're just going to guess that they all took 30 seconds because that's our best estimate. And these five people, we're going to guess that they all took 50 seconds. And these two people, we're going to guess that they took 70 seconds. And then we're going to times across. So 30 times 3, 50 times 5, and 70 times 2 is 90, 250, and 140. Because these three people all took 30 these five people all took 50 or, or so we're guessing and these two people all took 70 so we're going to add that all together because for the mean we know we add it all up and divide it by how many there are so that's that 480 now the common mistake i would see here people would divide it by three you're not going to divide by three there's three categories but there were not three students there were 10 students and if we add up this column we find out how many we're dividing by so 480 divided by 10 and make sure anything you're working out, you're, type, you're writing down. There we go. 480 divided by 10. So that's mean from a frequency table. 